here, I have the three witnesses that you asked to come this morning. They're sitting in the back. I can have them step out just onto the other side of the door. Will you walk out with them and just stand out there so that we can call them? Um, I do have members of the family, the father and brother, um, uh, who are present in the court, Your Honor, um, pursuant to uh, role. find the one that I had, Your Honor. There is a case law that um, says that a family member pursuant to the Victim's Bill of Rights can remain in his victim uh, are present in the courtroom. We're going to ask pursuant to the law, and I don't I had it on my desk, and I don't know where it was going, Your Honor. Um, but uh, the law states that they are allowed to remain in so we can say they're not a material witness in the sense of linking up anything else, their timeline of this issue. All right. Mr. Davis, do you object to the father and the brother remaining in the courtroom? I object to what the state has represented uh, that testimony to be. One of the things that the court wanted to do was to resolve all objections. And what Ms. Baskin is saying is that their testimony on direct and what could be their testimony on cross-examination is not going to be influenced by these witnesses. We've not heard the testimony of the witnesses. So the spirit of the rule of sequestration is to have the witnesses who may be affected by the testimony of another witness not to be present while that witness is testifying. In fact, Judge, if you recall, at least from what I can recall, part of the reason that the state objected to live streaming was because there was the potential of the rule of sequestration being violated. And so pursuant to uh, their arguments with regard to precluding the media from live streaming this trial, I would also state that there is a danger of allowing witnesses to remain and then being influenced by another witness's testimony. That's, this is the whole point of the rule of sequestration, which we, of course, I wouldn't go up, Judge. All right, here's what we're going to do. If dad and brother will remain out while we do this this morning, I will look very closely at that law. And I'll and we will, Okay, and we'll go further into what you expect their testimony to be. But let's get started this morning. Okay. Thank you. Um, and 
the issue being is, is can the state show uh, trustworthiness to admit the victim's statements under the exception to the, under this exception to the hearsay <coughs> rule? And the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals have consistently and very recently continued to assert that as long as the state can establish the nature of the relationship between the individuals, that they're not casual encounters, that these are people that uh, had uh, a long-standing relationship, had a close confidential relationship with the victim, that that establishes the trustworthiness of the statement. The state doesn't have to show anything else um, and I will be citing some case law. But for that purpose, Your Honor, we have the three uh, witnesses that the state intends to elicit statements made by the victim to their fr her friends with regards to the relationship she had with DeMarcus Little. Um, that is Sierra Stewart, Laurel Plummer, and Veronica Tall. Um, Ms. Culpepper is here, that's the grandmother that we decided against calling her and allowing her just to remain as um, support for the family. So uh, what the state is um, proposing is to call these three individuals up, establish the nature of their relationship, and believe at that point in time that the objection regarding any statements that they make that the victim said to them would then have to be overruled because of the sufficient trustworthiness that's established by the nature of the relationship. All right, Mr. Davis, any response? Yeah, Judge. Um, I guess we'll get into the case law. The state, uh, in its opening, has not presented a legal theory for allowing an exception to the hearsay rule. They talk about the necessity exception. I don't think there is a case in which the necessity exception has ever been applied in Georgia as a basis for allowing in hearsay evidence. And part of the reason for disallowing hearsay evidence is a defendant has a right under the Sixth Amendment to confront the person that made the statement. So uh, I'll wait until they actually make their arguments, their legal arguments, and then respond. I, I don't want to waste the court's time because they're supposed to put up witnesses um, who will I'm assuming substantiate um, the state's legal theory, but at this point, our position would be they have not articulated a legal theory as applied to this case, which would allow witnesses to testify as to what someone else said um, as an exception to the hearsay rule. I'm confused by that, Mr. Davis. I spent my whole weekend reading cases, um, not under the necessity. The necessity exception is no longer valid. Law it hasn't been since 2013, but the residual hearsay rule under 24-8-807, and that's what the state is arguing. So are you saying there are no cases in Georgia under the residual hearsay rule? No, no, Judge. What I first said was there was nothing to what the state said about necessity being an exception. Because they started off saying this was the necessity exception that has been essentially converted into Rule 807. Well, there, is, you, there is no necessity exception. Right, so that's, that's what I was saying. Yeah. So uh, part of what I was arguing was that part of the presentation was convoluted because they were mixing law that is not law with part of their legal theory. I don't know what they're going to argue, how they're going to present their case, because some of that was supposed to be established with these witnesses. So in terms of arguing specifically what's going to happen in this trial, I'm assuming we're going to argue that after they make their entire presentation. I was only commenting on the opening remarks made by the prosecutor. Well, let's not make it more complicated than we have to. I believe the state said the old necessity exception, um, and I understood what, what they meant. Um, all right, let's call your first witness. Thank you. I'm going to call Sierra Stewart. Yeah. 